<clears throat> when utilizing the nomenclature flowchart that we discussed in previous sections, if you had determined that you have an acid, there's a little bit more work that you need to do because there are actually two different types of acids that we need to be able to name. So if you've determined that the element to the left is a hydrogen, that means that you have an acid and the nomenclature is a little bit different for acids. There are two major types of acids that we want to name. Their nomenclature is a little bit different, so we need to determine which one of these two that we have. The first one is called a binary acid. And I know I have a binary acid when my acid contains only two elements. So we know one of them is already hydrogen. This means it's hydrogen plus one other element. That's why it's called binary, is that there's actually only two elements involved. So if you see a hydrogen and that's attached to one other element, your compound is a binary acid. If the acid contains an oxygen, it's probably what's called an oxy acid. There's a few different ways you can look at this. If you have more than two elements inside of your acid, it's probably an oxy acid. Also, if you see that the acid contains a polyatomic that contains an oxygen, it's probably an oxy acid. So the first one we're gonna look at is binary acids. Like we said, it only contains two elements. So the rules here is the word hydro comes first, and this is going to be true for all the binary acids. Hydro just means hydrogen. Then the first syllable of the name of the nonmetal, the other element it's attached to, and then ic acid at the end. When we look at these examples, HF, this is a binary acid because there's only two elements involved, so we name it hydro for the hydrogen. The first syllable of the element that it's attached to, which is fluorine or fluor, and then you add ic acid on the end. Same thing here, HI, binary acid because there's only two elements. Put down hydro to indicate the hydrogen. Then the first syllable of what it's attached to, so this is iodine or iode, and then you add ic acid to the end. Things get a little bit more complicated with our oxy acids. And when we were talking about polyatomics, you will notice that many of them contain oxygen. These negatively charged polyatomics are actually referred to as oxyanions. So if you take an oxyanion and you add enough hydrogen ions, or H+, to make the compound neutral, then it is termed an oxyacid. And so this is what we're going to name right now is oxyacids. The nomenclature of oxyacids is based off the name of the corresponding oxyanion or polyatomic. If the oxyanion has an eight ending, when we turn it into an acid, it will have an ic acid ending. Likewise, if the oxyanion has an ite ending, the acid will have an us acid ending. So let's look at a couple of examples of this. I've given you HNO2 and I wanna name it. You can either see the polyatomic in there or you remember that I need to remove this hydrogen to get to my polyatomic. I remember that hydrogens are plus one so once I remove this hydrogen, I will be left with NO2 minus. I then say, what is the name of NO2 minus? And I realize that this is the nitrite ion. Now to name our acid, HNO2, I realize that this is an oxyacid of the polyatomic nitrite, and it has an ite ending. So when you have an ite ending, the acid will have an us acid ending. So we remove the ITE, and replace it with us acid. So HNO2 is going to be called nitrous acid. Do another one. I see that this is an oxy acid. It has a hydrogen plus oxygens. I then consider what's the polyatomic that's being turned into an acid here. I can remove a hydrogen. I realize that the hydrogens are positively charged. The polyatomic involved is NO3 minus, which I know is named the nitrate ion. This has an eight ending, so it means that the acid will have an ic acid ending. So we cut off the ATE ending and replace it with ic acid. So HNO3 would be called nitric acid. So the acids with sulfur get an extra UR, and this is just some kind of an exception to the rule. So if I take the sulfite ion and turn it into an acid, so here 
I know it has a minus two charge, so I will have to add two H pluses to make the overall acid neutral. So that's why there's two hydrogens here because it has a minus two charge here. So if I turn the sulfite ion into an acid, it would be sulfurous acid. Same thing for the sulfate anion. I need to add two hydrogens because we have an eight ending here. It will turn into an ic acid ending, but we have an extra UR. So if I turn the sulfate ion into an acid, it would be H2SO4 or sulfuric acid.